Welcome back. My name's Mike Slane, the Discount Property Investor. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today I'm excited to be talking about the Rich Dad Poor Dad book by Robert Kiyosaki. Thank you so much, Robert, for writing this book. I know I am not the only one, especially in my age group or genre, uh, that, that owes a lot to you because we read this book and we got inspired and then we took action and it's changed our lives for the better. So again, Robert Kiyosaki, thank you so much uh, for writing this book. Uh, let's talk a little bit about it. So what is Rich Dad Poor Dad about? Uh, Robert writes this book in the style of kind of a biography. He talks about it as if he was growing up in, and again, I think some of this is, is true. Again, it's a lot of it is based on his life, I believe. Uh, but he talks about his childhood growing up with his own father and one of his good friend's fathers. And he refers to them as his rich dad and his poor dad. And it's not necessarily that they were rich or poor at the time. Uh, it's just the lessons that they taught him and how they came out uh, after a period of time. And spoiler alert, uh, Robert's well-educated college professor father uh, is the one that ends up being the poor dad. And his friend's father, who is blue collar worker, just hustling and working really hard every day, ends up being the rich dad. Uh, and again, these are the lessons that he relays to us in this book and that he learned growing up from both of his fathers. So uh, some of the lessons, Let, let's, uh, before I jump in, I wanna talk about one of my favorite quotes uh, in this book and something that I hold to be very, very true. And it's the old saying that money is the root of all evil. I don't agree with that, neither does Robert. He put in his book, the lack of money is the root of all evil. And that is something I hold to be true. I truly believe that when we as individuals are, you know, we're, we're just animals. And when we don't have resources or money and, or food or shelter, we will do anything to survive. I mean, most of us will do anything to help provide for our family. And it's that lack of resources or that lack of having money to provide for our family that puts a lot of people in positions where they're gonna do things they wouldn't if they were uh, comfortable. So I do not believe that the love of money is a bad thing. Being able to provide for your family, being able to help other people, being able to take care of other people is a good thing. And working towards making more money, which is just a medium of exchange that we use uh, is a good thing. Again, being a productive member of society, adding value to other people, they, if you add value, they give you money, then you've got money and you can do more good with it. So I, I truly believe that loving money is a good thing. So let's talk a little bit about the book. Again, that's my one of my favorite takeaways from it. Another one, let's talk about one of the lessons uh, that he teaches us about money. So I think you kind of have to go in somewhat of an order here. The first thing that he teaches is it doesn't matter how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. And this is kind of uh, distilled throughout the book in several different ways. One of those ways is talking about how corporations pay taxes. Um, it's one of the biggest secrets, he says, of the rich is that an individual goes to work, they earn money, then they pay taxes, so their income is taxed already, and then they spend what's left over. But a corporation is different. A corporation earns money, then they spend money, so on expenses and all sorts of things. And you probably hear this about um, some little company or business owner says, oh, I have to go buy a new vehicle by the end of the year. Why do they have to do that? Well, they're gonna spend that money so then it's not profit, so they don't have to pay taxes on it, income taxes on it, and they're able to buy that vehicle and then write it off. I mean, it's unbelievable. So. So it's a difference between corporations and individuals and how they spend money. And that real, that directly affects their standard of living. This guy's got a new truck versus the other guy who paid all his taxes and then can't afford to buy a new truck. So it's just, it's very, very interesting. It's eye opening. Uh, another thing that Robert talks about is you don't have to be the smartest guy in the room to get ahead. He talks about in the book even that he has a bunch of people that are smarter than him that work for him. Because as a business owner, you hire people. And one of the things that people like 
uh, when they're hiring people is that college degree because it just shows that you're willing to go and show up every day. Um, so anyways, he's got smarter people, people than himself working for him. And that is how he got ahead. It does not ma it does not, you do not have to be that intelligent yourself to get ahead. You just have to be bold enough, take the risks, and again, put in the work and the effort and most people can get ahead. One of the, another lesson, and this is probably one of the bigger takeaways. Again, there's so many good, good things in this book, but one of them is the poor and the middle class are gonna end up working for money and the rich have money work for them. So this goes back to that whole example of what we're taught our lives. You go to school, get a good education, get a good job, and you work for that money for the rest of your life until you've got a couple years where you've saved up enough that you can now retire. That's not the life I want. Uh, so it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Um, but the rich, they have money work for them. So how do the rich do that? They take the money that they earn and they buy assets with it. Then, with those assets, they buy their toys and they buy their luxuries. So I, I need to add another thing on there. What is an asset and what is a liability? According to um, Kiyosaki in his book, and I agree, it's the way I look at things, an asset is something that puts money into your pocket at the end of the day, whereas a liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. So that's not the textbook definition of asset and liability that you're gonna see, uh, or when you talk to your accountant, the same way they're gonna see it. Because if you think about that, that means that your personal residence, since you live there and have to pay a mortgage or pay rent, that is a liability. That is not an asset. If you own that property, you're gonna have to spend money every month. So again, Kiyosaki, this famous rich dad, poor dad author and real estate investor, you know, it, your, your personal residence isn't an asset. That's crazy. But it makes sense when you think about it from the context of what is going to allow you time freedom and what is gonna require you to work for money or spend money. So if I can buy a rental property and then someone else pays that mortgage and pays me a little extra, that property now becomes an asset. So again, your, your personal residence could be a, a liability if you look at it that way. And that's what the rich, or that's the way that the rich accumulate more assets is by taking their income, investing in assets, investing in assets again, investing in assets again, until you have enough assets to cover your living expenses and then you are out of the rat race, as Robert puts it. Uh, really cool board game by him too, it's called uh, Rat Race, uh, or no, Cash Flow. It's called Cash Flow. Uh, but the whole idea is that you get out of the rat race. So that's kind of what the whole book is about is how Robert grew up, learned different lessons, one from his very well-educated father who he refers to as the poor dad, and how he learns a lot of lessons from his rich dad, who is a blue collar guy, but is starting a business or rather owns a business, operates a business and how their lives and just opinions on work and money are so different. Uh, if you're looking to learn more about real estate, check out Robert's books, or I'd love it if you uh, followed me for more content like this. I talk about rental real estate almost exclusively on this channel. Uh, as well as uh, wholesaling and other types of real estate investing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you like this, again, like I said, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.